be involved with your own life and don't allow any other person to kind of um, live your own life. So my mom said, taught me that I just had to experience my life for myself, you know, very well. So I, I kind of intend to live my life to the full. Yes, living, experiencing my own experience. It kind of gave me a different mindset of my life. So I can't go down my mom died. Hi, lovely people. Hi. Hi, people. Welcome back to this channel. This is Future Clear Flavors. Yes, and in this channel, we appreciate God. We kind of give gratitude in this channel. And um, we see the workings of God in our eyes. We see it every day. And we talk about it. You know, um, the Bible says that um, count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will shock you. Yes, it just surprised you what the Lord has done. So basically, in this channel, we count our blessings every single day. And um, we give God gratitude for all our blessings. Because we know that, yes, every day is a blessing. For us, waking up is a blessing on its own. Because you have to be alive before you can talk about, you know, every other thing in life. So we kind of, um, you know, talk about our experiences in life in this channel from the point of being grateful. That's what we do here in this channel. Today is a good day. Yes, today is the last day of the month of November. Yay! And I'm so very excited to be alive today to, you know, you know, seeing the the last quarter of the year is so very kind of remarkable. But um today I just want to talk about um the challenges of this year. This year has been so very remarkable. It is a very remarkable year. I for one personally have gone through a whole lot of challenges this year. I don't know why but this year has been packed up with a whole lot of challenges but I still appreciate God you understand for all these challenges that I've been through and I just see it as a learning process because I learn from it. Yes I learn from all my challenges and move on in life with the lessons that I've learned from my challenges. So this year has been a very fruitful year, has been a very challenging year, has been a year full of um, lessons to be learned. And one of the challenges that I faced this year is the death of my mom. Yes, the death of my mom shook me so well as in you know, she has been sick one way or the other and we've been managing her. But this day she decided to leave. Yes. And in a way, her dying, you know, opened me up to life that yes, there's time for everything. There's a time to be to be born and there's a time to experience life. And the time to experience life is very, very remarkable because that's the time that you have to kind of make so many adjustments, learn and try to kind of you know what is really happening so you just have to kind of um live a very fulfilled life because you're involved you have to kind of um learn a whole lot of things compel yourself to learn a whole lot of things because that's the holy period that you know because when you were born you don't actually know when you're born but you know when how you grow as in the growing process you know from one year to another and all that so you just have to kind of uh, be involved with your own life and don't allow any other person to kind of um, live your own life for you. So my mom said, taught me that I just had to experience my life for myself. Then, because there will be a time that you're going to die. Yes, it's either you leave this world or you die. I, I now know that, you know, very well. So I, I kind of intend to live my life to the full. Yes, living, experiencing my own experience then i also know that you know there will be a time that you will die and when you die all those things that you're trying to accumulate you know acquire this acquire this you know step on so many stools and all that there'll be a time that they are no it's not going to be relevant because i saw it in total when my mom as in all the material things that she she has acquired she was just lying down on the grave and they mean nothing for her to her, sorry, to her, because they like kind of, you know, her clothes, so many clothes that she has, and all that stuff, 
but just kind of pour inside the grave and she could not just kind of do anything she was just that uh, the line the lifeless and all those things that she acquired accumulate and all that could not you know save her she could not even fight for it and all that so it kind of gave me a different mindset about life so i thank god that my mom died at the time at the age that she died because she really kind of uh, opened me up to so many things that um i thought is really relevant but now i see that it's not relevant so my mom died this year and um this year as i say this year has been so very challenging and that's one of the experiences of life that i enjoyed this year yes i say enjoy because yes it taught me a whole it gave me a new perspective when it comes to life so i really kind of um, thank god for that though it was a challenge a very big challenge because at the point that she died I, there was no money anyway to kind of do the burial, but miraculously the money was provided and we gave her a very befitting burial. And I thank God that there was money to do that. Then, of course, this year, my finances, I just want to thank God because I don't even know how I kind of passed through all this year. Because I kind of, um, you know, I don't even know, you know, in where I work. I've not, I was not involved because in uh, going out and all that because you said a whole lot of things that um, when you are involved, apart from your salary, any other thing is a privilege. So throughout this year, the privilege did not come. You understand? I was just kind of basically based on, uh, on my salary. And my salary, I kind of, you know, got everything out to kind of bury my mom. And so the salary that was coming in was not really kind of sufficient to, you know, take me throughout the month. But I saw all thank God that, you know, I passed through this year and I'm now seeing the last day of November entering December, you know. It's so very remarkable. It's a very challenging year, but very learning process for me, <laughs> if there's any word like that. Yes. There are another thing that beats me in it is that, um, you know, I see my children growing so well, you know, growing every day. And I kind of see their growth is so very remarkable. The children that you gave back to yesterday, they are now, you know, running around for you, for you and all that. It kind of excites me, you know, though it's challenging, you know, being, I kind of, uh, this year I told myself that, or I realized something that it's not just giving back to children, it's the uh, parenting that is the whole thing that any other person can just lie down and get pregnant and just give back to the child and off you go. But when you make up your mind, you have a way that you want to train your children. Parenting is really, really the main thing, and it's just not easy. So I thank God that, you know, what I'm teaching my children, I see them practicing it and bringing it to life right before my eyes. So I really give God the glory for that this year. Then in the office, I kind of, um, you know, see the life that people are living there. And I told myself, you know, Basically, where I work, or generally, you know, the lifestyle of um, workers, people that work, I kind of, it kind of amazed me that um, when you're working in an office, another colleague of yours will just want to kind of, um, you know, will be thinking that I have to kind of pull you down for he or she to go up. It kind of amazed me that people will have, will have that kind of mindset that, you, you know, I have to kind of... Um, you know, cut against the other person to be able to get up, to get up there or get one or two fever from, you know, from, I don't even know, from people, from human beings. So I think we should live a life of service. And as a leader, if I'm placed in a position, I kind of think that I'm, I'm here to be of service to the, to the people I'm leading. You understand? And my, yes. And my primary purpose is to see the people I'm leading, you understand, you become relevant in in whatsoever position they are. That's my own thinking. And I'm kind of thinking that, yes, especially Christian, if you're a Christian, you should live a life of service. And one of the services that you need to render when you're placed in a position of authority, maybe leadership, and you have people under you, is to see them become better. So it kind of beats my imagination when you are placed in charge of some set of people and you want to dominate them with your words, the way you talk to them and all that. It really kind of um, 
beat my imagination. Why, you know, maybe somebody that you are kind of um, a, in good time, terms with, an opportunity comes and the person kind of move a little bit a, a ahead of you, and the person now feel that this is the time that I have to kind of castigate the other person because I'm placed in this position of leadership. I, for one, I feel it's not like that because it's not supposed to be that way. Because you are supposed to live a life of service. And when you're placed in, in charge of some people, your aim is to kind of build those people. You understand? And your words are important. You know, you might be thinking that uh, what I'm saying to those people is not affecting them emotionally. You know, it's not true. Your words as a leader in charge of some, some people that you're leading in an organization, in the family, parenting, or anywhere you're placed in a, pro, in a position of leader, leadership, you should watch your, watch your word. Your word should be what will uplift the people that you're placed in charge of. When you see somebody that maybe um, somebody that is just you placed under you, when you when you're placed in that position and you see somebody that is trying to kind of help and you know better his or her self, you as a leader you should kind of encourage that person and not use your word to kind of pull that person down. I cannot do that and I find it so very, you know, amazing that people that are leaders do that. You understand? You should not be harsh in your word as a, in your in, in your in your talking as a leader. You understand? You the word that comes out of your mouth towards the people that you're placed in charge should be a word of encouragement. Especially when you see that yes, this social -so person is trying to kind of um you know be relevant. Yes. When you notice that you should kind of even when the person is not relevant we should watch you, you you're not supposed to be harsh in your word that's what they call rudeness when you are placed in a position of um, authority and your words are harsh rude i feel it's not a good thing and something needs to be done you know this year has been a very kind of challenging year and i experienced all this and i'm kind of telling myself that you have to be different and this year, as we're entering next year, I'm talking to myself that, yes, not even when I'm placed in a place of authority, my words towards the people around me should be seasoned with love. Yes, seasoned with love. Should be words of education. Words that people hear, they will, now, they will be encouraged. Because if you look at the economic position of this country right now, everybody is trying to kind of, um, is just trying to be cope with so many things so guys as i was saying if you are in a position of authority that's when you are supposed to wash your word 100 percent 100 percent because your word is supposed to be seasoned with encouragement with love you understand with upliftment not the other way around because people are looking up to you and people feel that you're placed there to kind of uh, be of, you know, how am I going to put this one? To be of, um, you know, to, to kind of, uh, you know, be of help to them somehow, somehow. I don't know how I'm going to put it. So you're placed in a, when you're placed in a, in a position of authority, you should know that, yes, people are looking up to you. Yes. Because so many people will not be able to kind of, um, you um, know, lashing out your words they will not be able to kind of um, face you and talk to you you understand because of your position so you should be reasonable enough to know that yes this position i am i might not be there tomorrow somebody will be there so what impact are you going to make in this position that you are and for me i feel if you're placed in a position of authority you should see it as an opportunity for you to serve yes it's an opportunity for you to serve. Yes, you might not be thought that everybody will talk good, good of, but you should consciously do things that you yourself, your conscious, will be justified. That yes, when I was in this position, that that I am, that I, when I was in this position, I did not misuse it. You understand? I know what I'm talking about because 
I see a whole lot of things with leaders these days that um, it really kind of amazes me. They just talk anyhow, lash on their sub on, on the people that they are leading anyhow. And I feel it's not supposed to be like that. Especially in a country now that everybody needs encouragement from each other. Because if you look at the economy of Nigeria, it's not really kind of uh, encouraging. And uh, people are just there trying to kind of um, make make their life worthwhile. So you should not be the one that will like kind of, um, you know, um, kill them emotionally. Because there's, um, there's psychological and emotional, you know, trauma that people are going through with the economic situation of this nation. So you should not be... <clears throat> excuse me you should not be the one that will like kind of place people on that psychological and emotional you know trauma you should not be the one you should be a source of encouragement to the people you are leading i just feel like you see this you know um we're going to be entering um december very soon and i'm going to kind of um you know talk about um uh, maybe uh the gratefulness the way I'm grateful concerning this year, you know, maybe list everything I'm grateful to God about this year. But I just feel I should just say this um, quickly to encourage somebody out there, if you're a leader, please watch your word. Because what you say matters a whole lot to the people you're leading. That's just the essence of me making this. Because this year has been so very challenging for me. And I really kind of... um. I will not really kind of encourage it when somebody tries to kind of, with the walls you see, trying to kind of um, add more. Do you understand to the challenges that I face? And I'm not going to allow it. And I'm encouraging, you know, one person called out there, don't allow people's words to bring you down. No matter what the other person has said or is saying concerning you, you are the one in charge of your life. You say what you want to see in your life. Talk to yourself. Tell yourself that you're smart. The other person might not see your smartness, but you see your own smartness. So talk to yourself that you are smart, no matter what the other person is saying concerning you. Do you, and don't allow the other person, even though the person is your leader, you do you, and choose to talk to yourself that you are important, you are relevant, you are intelligent, and you are sound, because you are your own best friend. You are your own best friend. You know, encourager, if there's any word like that. So encourage yourself and finish this year strong. And don't allow any other person to bring you down this year. Because the challenges of this year is enough to allow any other person to talk you down. Or make you, you know, go mad, go mad mentally. Yes, because if you allow it, the words of other people could make you go mad mentally. So guide yourself because if you allow it, you will run mad. I'm talking to myself because I will not just give any anybody the opportunity to run me down mentally. So guys, I, I kind of really said. don't know the kind of, um, you know, um, should I say a competition that is going up in the working place that, you know, people just consciously just create a kind of competition in the working place that is just not friendly. It's just not okay with me, and this year I fixed all that, and I'm still just ready to kind of. Um, I told myself practically that I'm not going to go go that way, and I'm, to God be the glory. I, this year, you know, finishes, and I just refuse to go that way. But it beat my imagination whereby, you know, some people see you as if you're a threat to them, just by men looking at you. You're just trying to kind of better your like me. I just choose to get better every time. You understand? And I try as much as possible to kind of um, create an avenue for me to go. Do you understand? As in doing more studying, kind of, um, you know, going to school to learn more. And I'm building myself. I sh you should not see it as if uh, my own choice of building myself is not a threat to you. So in an office, I see that when you're trying to kind of um, make, improve yourself, other people just see it as if you're a threat to them. For me, I kind of told myself that I'm in competition with myself and not with the other person. Yes, not with my colleague, not with my husband, not with um, my children, not with my family members or any other thing. I'm just in competition with myself. 
I'm in competition with my past. I'm in competition with what I was the last minute. Because, you know, I kind of um, talk to myself every day that I, in every second, what can I do next to better myself? And that's why, you know, I so thank God that I have you to, you know, to kind of learn a whole lot of things, you know, do courses. Like, I'm not comfortable where I am this year in my finances. And I do a whole lot of kind of a YouTube, I, I take a whole lot of kind of a YouTube lesson concerning my, you know, my finances. Because I want to get better, you understand, in, in, in the way I handle my finances. So if I'm better now and I'm talking about my finances, how I've improved in my finances, another person will be there and be saying that she's proud or she's kind of, no, I am doing all that because I want to kind of get better with myself every single day not to be a threat to any other person so if you see like this year i'm doing my phd and i find out that some people see it as a threat to them no you should not be the you know the the the, the sky is so wide right very very wide nobody the bears cannot collide so if somebody is kind of improving herself does not mean that that person is improving for you not to improve yourself and you kind of do everything you want to do to kind of pull that person down it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense for me it doesn't make sense so the other purpose in improvement or or trying to kind of better his or her life should not be your own threat you should not make it your own threat and then start misbehaving to the to the, to the person or try every everywhere you can to kind of pull that person down. I see that in the in offices, and it's not supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be. You do you. Just the person, just the way the person is doing you. So this year, as I said, has been a very very challenging year for me, and that's what I see. You know, I see colleagues, you know, trying to kind of uh, pull you down because you're trying to kind of pull you up. Do you understand? I am pulling myself up, guys. If and if you're pulling yourself that up. If I'm pulling myself up, does not mean that you yourself won't be able to pull yourself up. Yeah, I'm just kind of, you know, talking about my challenges this year and thanking God that I made it through. And um, and I'm here, you know, seeing the last quarter of this year, especially November and entering December. I'm just trying, trying to kind of appreciate God for bringing me towards this side despite the challenges. So that's it, guys. I just want to talk about all this. And you know, me, I for one, when I'm going through something and I talk about it, I get relieved out of it. So this year, these are some of the challenges that I faced this year. And I feel, thank God for this platform that I have to talk about it and never to bring myself down. Just the way I'm encouraging you not to allow any challenges you face this year to bring you down. It's a learning process for you. Just pick the lesson and then move on to 2019. 24 and let's be happy and learn more with the next year that is coming and enjoy your christmas just the way i deliberately choose to enjoy my christmas no matter what i face this year i choose to enjoy this christmas yes guys because um i'm encouraging myself and i feel i should encourage encourage one or two people out there too so you do you as we're finishing this year don't allow anybody to talk you down. Even if that person is your leader, is placed, you know, is placed to lead you. Don't just allow anybody to talk you down. Talk yourself up when people are talking you down. Because you are your own best friend. Best. Anything you can think of. And if you don't do that, nobody will. So start to this channel as well. Huh? Let me think of one of the notifications so that when you take full, you'll be the first to I love you guys. And if you find this um, content valuable, please subscribe and join the content. I love you guys.